I've got two new pens on my desk today that I'm going to go over with you guys and stay tuned to the end if you want to hear whether this 90 plus dollar pen is worth it compared to this less than $20 pen. Hey guys, it's Jenny Lynn, and I'm here today to do an unboxing of two new fountain pens that I just got. But before I get started, I have just filmed like five videos that I'm about to post in the next couple weeks. So if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the button and subscribe. I make art, planner, and sort of stationary related videos, and I'd love to have you join us. So um, this is my fountain pen slash ink uh, traveler's notebook that I use as in sort of like inventory and swatching. So I'm definitely going to use this today. And then these are the two pens I got. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do these together because one is super cheap. This is Hong Dian. Uh, they're calling it the 18, uh, 1862 fountain pen and it was less than $20. So I'll just show you really quick. And then it's like an all metal body with a stainless, uh, let's see, fine. And it, um, well, I'll, I'll talk about them in a second, but let's just compare. This is a sailor, which I have my other sailor out here. I love it, it's beautiful, but of course, they're fairly expensive, so, well, hmm, <sighs> so beautiful. So this one was $91, and that's actually pretty cheap for this specific one. I did get it on Amazon. Oh, this is completely sealed. Let's see. All right. Um, definitely going to get the name wrong on this. Basically, um, all I cared about was this gorgeous color. It's this sort of minty color and it has these sparkles running through it. And it's, as you can tell, pretty petite. So um, it's even shorter than my other one, which is also pretty petite. Next to, let's just put a regular old, let's see. Here's my Estabrook. You can see it's pretty small which is what I was looking for. I wanted something that was going to be a um, pen I carry with me. And they have this. So this is a 14 karat gold nib. It's really beautiful. I love the little anchor that is inscribed in there. And um, let's see, does this come with a converter? It does not, did it? Was there one in here? I did not realize that it does not come with a converter, so I'm gonna have to go through my stash and find one. But it did come with cartridges. Okay, so all that said, I wanted to just do, not that these are supposed, this is obviously not supposed to be a dupe of this, but I thought it'd just be interesting to see um, a fairly expensive pen next to a very cheap pen. Um, and compare them since I ordered them both the same time. I only ordered this one because I just thought it was really pretty. I loved the, I think they called this coffee color or latte or something along that, those lines. I also, once I got it, realized that it's a snap-on and I always love the feeling of a snap-on. So we'll look at this one first. Uh, did I need new fountain pens? I did not. So here's all my Quebecos, um, sports. Here's the ones that I use the most. Um, I love my Twisbees. Um, here's another Twisby. This is a, which one is this? Oh yes, a Pelican. And then I've got a whole, <laughs> a whole tray of beautiful fountain pens. So I have lots and lots of fountain pens and I have really, it's been, I don't know, it's been at least a couple years since I've bought an expensive one, but um, 
I was sort of celebrating something small and I decided to go for it. Okay, so um, I found a converter that works for this. So typically what I do when I'm filling a pen with ink, well, to be totally honest, like 50% of the time I'm filling it with this, this Ferris wheel press. Um, I think they call this Kentucky bluegrass or something along those lines, but it's a teal color. It's what's in here now. It's just, I don't know. It's my very favorite color. The only issue, and it, it's not really an issue, but it's, um, it, it's not waterproof. I wish that it was because I like to use it in my planner and especially on um, Tomoe River paper, it smears pretty easily. And in fact, it's one of the reasons I stopped using my Hobonichi because I was constantly smearing whenever I was on there. So anyways, but um, what I typically do if I'm looking to fill my pen with a new ink is I start by looking in my ink swatch thing and I don't have um, the vast majority of these colors I have in a little tester sample size so I don't have like a full bottle of all of these but like for instance like this is a really interesting looking blue um, I'll start with that and then I either go find the bottle that I have of it or I go to this big tray of inks that I have and I have them lined up um, in alphabetical order and I go ahead and I like pull the ink sample so that's what I'm gonna do now is figure out um, what I'm gonna do so there's always that question of like oh do I pick an ink that matches the barrel or do I just pick a I typically just pick an ink that is pretty to me so for instance I love all basically all of the travel uh, troublemaker inks I think they're all really beautiful um, and I also was thinking I'd really like to have a brown color for the season. So let's see where I end up. And then after I fill both of these, I will do swatches in my fountain pen journal. Okay. All right. So here I am. I'm back. And, um... I was, let this be a lesson to anybody out there who hoards things and doesn't use them, and certainly to myself, um, I'm speaking, but a couple of the inks that I wanted to use were not dried up in the sample thing, which is not super common, but it happened. Um, so as you can see, I'm using like a little needle here. I just find it to be um, a little bit easier than getting things super messy and dirty, so... What I'm going to do is um, just fill this up and then just lets me use like every last drop of these sample bottles because they're so small that the pen usually wouldn't pull all of that in. And then sometimes I will... Um, Sometimes I'll take this and I'll do like some sort of like messy art in an art journal. If I'm at the end of the bottle, I kind of try to use it all up and like kind of do some cool like spray stuff and stuff like that. But um, today, since I still have a lot of this, I'm just going to put it back in the sample kit. I'm cleaning my thing off here. I have a, a little contraption that's meant to hold this without it falling over, but I can't find it. So I'm just using a little stack of washi tape to make sure these don't fall over. And now I am taking the second one, which the first one I just took was this Toto and Limbs uh, shade of Sakura. And now I'm taking this really pretty diamine ink called Terracotta, because I was hoping to get something that was more a brown tone and good for the fall and also just complements this fountain pen. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just fill it up. Okay. So put that back in. Okay. All right. So now 
got both of those. All right, so now I'm gonna clean my area up a little bit and then I'm going to do some ink swatches. Okay, so this is a really beautiful notebook I have from Speckled Fawn. I'm gonna get the name wrong. I wanna say it's called like Brownie or something like that. It's just so beautiful. So this basically keeps anything related to fountain pens or <clears throat> fountain pen inks. And you'll see here that I have an inventory where I swatch essentially a sample of handwriting with the name of each pen I have. And clearly I've not done all of them because this is not um, all of them. But what I do try to do is whenever I get a new pen, I start by writing in here. So I have a sort of log and you'll see here that um, like for instance, here's one that has a music nib. It's really thick. Um, here's a thicker nib. Here's a little stub. Uh, this journaler nib is pretty interesting on my Estabrook. Um, so what I'm looking for right now and I can't find is my, oh, Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm, I'm going crazy. Okay, so I use this little, um, pencil board here. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but for me, I can see the lines behind it. So the one thing about putting in the ink the way that I did is that um, the nib is not wet yet, right? Because I didn't draw the ink in through here. So typically what I do is I actually kind of force ink through the barrel, uh, through the nib um, by pushing. And this is very, <laughs> I don't recommend this at home because at some point it literally will just gush everywhere, but I just do it very slowly. And you'll see at some point there, it's starting to bubble. So you just have to do it carefully so you don't um, get ink absolutely everywhere. Let's see, okay, yes. All right, so this is a um, Indian. 1862 and the nib size is fine metal body I want to say they call this cocoa so that's what I'm gonna put for the color I don't have a you know, very specific thing I write here. I just try to capture enough to get a feel. And I can tell you right off the bat that this is um, a very smooth nib. There's barely any feedback. And then typically what I will do is then come back here and write with it just a little bit in the back. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And then this is such a satisfying click, click pen here. And then we're gonna go over to the sailor. Right, so I just got the ink to start flowing and this color is not what I was expecting. And let's see what it looks like. I'm just gonna call this, um, since I don't have the official name in front of me, Mint Seasons. It's one of the multiple sets they've released where they have four different ones. And then um, this is a 14K nib and they build this as a medium fine. So this is a very pink it's coming out very pink and this is what my original swatch was so um i have a feeling what i did was i did not shake this and because i just took a fine needle and i got some from the very bottom unless it just when it's very thin it comes out in a different tone because you can see here 
that there are some very light colors to this. Um, I bet if I had a much wetter nib, wider nib, any of the above, that this would be darker. So I probably will end up changing this out, to be honest, because I wanted something that was more purple, and I am not a pink person, so we'll see. But anyways, for the purpose of this, this is fine. So then I usually come back here, and I will just write in here, but so um, again, the idea is that I can always, if I'm looking for a specific type of writing, so like this is a really beautiful lavender type color, that's what I was looking for, um, that for instance, I just moved back into my traveler's notebook and I need a pen that's very tiny because I'm used to writing on A5 and so I needed something smaller. So this pen, um, my other sailor is very tiny. It writes very smooth and, um, you know, I know that that's something that I can use for that purpose. Whereas if I'm looking for something that has a little more, let's say like personality to the writing and this is one that I would come to the, um, my Esther book that has a modified nib that somebody like actually hand ground. So anyways, that's just, you know, what the purpose of this is. And also again, when I get a new pen, it's just good to spend a few minutes with it. And, um, here's another log of my different inks that I have. But it's always misleading. If you're someone who um, follows inks watching, you'll know that you see all these inks with this really beautiful like shading and sheening and everything. And when you're writing with a very thin pen, you don't get that right. So um, that's why it's, it's nice to also do ink swatching with thinner pens in addition to this because you don't get all of that when you're using just a thin pen. So, okay. So that said, just after very limited use of both of these and the on the, writing them out, here's what I can tell you is, um, and I say this as someone who loves and obviously collects fountain pens, that this pen that was, uh, I want to say it was $18 um, compared to this that runs, you know, obviously much more than that is a very solid writer and it's very comfortable. It's got a nice weight to it. It feels substantial in your hand and it's very smooth. In fact, if you like smooth writing, it's probably smoother than this that, you know, sailors are known for having a little bit of feedback to them. Um, this is a beautiful pen. It's obviously has a lot of detail in it. Probably, if I had to guess, over time, this is going to hold up better. Um, I did read some reviews where people were saying that some of this white was chipping off. But this has pretty details too, right? And it, it's by no means looks like a cheap pen. Um, in fact, some of you might be thinking, wow, $20 for a pen, that's a lot. Um, but all I'm saying is that um, you do not need this pen to enjoy writing or to, you know, um, even start this hobby. This is a really nice pen, and there's plenty of pens in this price range that are really enjoyable to write with. In fact, my go-to pens are these little Quecos that are anywhere in the $20 to $30 or $40 range, and you can start your little, you know, fun collection like I've got here. So... Um, I hope you guys like this, and like I said, I've got a lot of new videos coming up, um, setting up my new traveler's notebooks that I have, and decorating some. I'm about to put some patches and stuff on, and also some art journaling type stuff. So please, if you're not already a subscriber, uh, join us, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye, guys.